Hello, my name is Mr. Lee Jennings. I am the learning leader for history and over the next couple of minutes I'm going to be speaking to you about A-level history, what it's about, what content that will be covered during the course, how it is examined and why you possibly may want to choose it at A-level. So why choose history? So if you've enjoyed history at GCSE and QC3 before that, that's a good starting point. Um, every A-level is difficult, so if you have a genuine love and passion for the subject, then it offsets the amount of hard work and hours you have to put in to be successful. It builds on all the knowledge and skills that you've learned in Key Stage 3 and 4. It also it's a very strong uh, A-level to have, the academic A-level, so universities and employers uh, like to see that on your CV or UCAS forms. And also that you get to study a wide range of different types of history as well as different time periods. So for in history there is something for everyone. So this is the course as we do at the moment. So we do the Edexcel exam board route H. So the paper one here is about Britain, which I'll talk about in a second. The follow on from that is the USA from 1955 to 92. And again, I'll speak about that in a minute. Paper three is the witch craze. And we also complete coursework in A-level history. So paper one H is Britain transformed 1918 to 97. This is worth 30% of the final year level and is a two hour, 15 minute exam. So within that exam, you will be expected to write three essays, usually between four and five pages long. Uh, the final essay is an interpretation question. So within that, you will look at two historians opinion on a topic and then analyze that very similar to what you've been doing at GCSE. Uh, it's very detailed and covers all aspects of Britain during the 20th century, so just after the First World War there, right up until 1997. And there is a couple of things that we look at, so immigration, the impact of TV on society, the roles of women, all the different prime ministers during this time period and their policies, as well as the development of popular culture, uh, such as sport, and the impact that has on society. So the next paper is the USA 1955 to 92 conformity and challenge. This looks at the domestic policies of the USA between uh, those years. This is worth 20% of the final A level, which is a one hour and 30 minutes exam, which is you will write two essays. One of those essays will be a source question, which is built upon the skills that you've learned from GCSE of the idea of a source being useful. Uh, this and the Britain paper you will be studying in year 12. And they kind of worked together in tandem in terms of looking at politics and policies of uh, the governments in Britain and in the USA. So within this unit, there is a couple of different points that we look at. So the civil rights movement, uh, all the different presidents and what they did in their terms of office, the change in per, uh, popular culture, as well as the impact of the economy and religion on America. So in year 13, you will then study paper 3, which is all about the witch craze. So this is worth 30% of the final mark in a 2 hour, 15 minute exam. Again, three essays in the exam, including a source question similar to the USA paper. And then the areas that you look at is you look at case studies in Europe and USA and look for the reasons for and then the decline in witch craze. And as you can see there, we look at certain locations such as North Berwick and then Salem in America and Hamburg in Germany. So the final part of the A-level history is the coursework, and this will be complete in year 13 as well. It is worth 20% of the final grade and is a mini dissertation very similar to what you will do if you study history at university. It's 4,000 words based on a historical argument, and you will be doing all your own research and then writing up the answer. And we currently do it on the Arab-Israeli conflict and the rise of Arab nationalism. So if you don't know what that is, might be a good idea to do a little bit of research and try and find out a little bit more about it. And this is what you need to get onto the course. So we're looking at at least grade fives in ideally history and English and maths. But we need some good literacy skills. We do a lot of reading and a lot of writing, as well as the idea of being independent and committed. So in total, you have five hours within school a week and you should at least match that at home. So at least 10 hours a week on history and the coursework is completely independent where you have very limited input from the teacher and finally what can you do with a-level history so like i said before it is a desirable a-level to have so a good mark in a-level history is looked on favorably by universities and employers 
you develop a variety of skills which employees look for, like I've written there. And of course, you can go on to study history at university, which is a very transferable degree. So a lot of people who have a history degree go on to a range of different careers, like journalism or in politics or in law. So if, thank you for listening. And if you've got any questions, please just ask your history teacher or you can get in contact with me. Thank you very much.